Okay, this is for Tuesday, December 15th. We are continuing working with homeostasis, and our target today is I can explain how organisms maintain homeostasis. So if we look at the key graphic today, you see Homer, and there's two stimulus. So homeostasis is balance, or making your body a homey place to stay. Just the right temperature, just the right amount of sugar, just the right amount of water, okay? Plants and other organisms have the same requirements and their um, systems go through this checks and balance. When something goes out of whack or becomes unbalanced from a stimulus, then the organism systems seek to put it back into balance. For example, when on the left side, you can see as the temperature increases, the body sweats, so the increase in temperature is the stimulus, and the body sweating is the response because as the water evaporates, it takes the heat with it. And then on the other side, as the temperature decreases, you shiver, you get goosebumps, and that's the body's response is to maintain heat or absorb extra heat. So homeostasis is this circle of stimulus and responses to maintain balance. And so that's what we will continue to do today as a general review, and we will keep this in mind as we go through the human body. Um, so today, you need to start off with your mind stretcher and canvas, and you are recording it in your data tracker in your OneNote notebook. And then in just a second, I want to go over the 4B quiz. I noticed some trends after grading them. I want to go over so everyone can get a better score and to understand the concept better. And then yesterday's major grade, the scientific explanation, I want to hit that again. And that will be entered in Canvas. And then today, the homeostasis tax cards, which will go into OneNote skills section. So, to revisit, in your OneNote notebook, in the quiz section, you had a 4B um, quiz that came after we did the lab with FET and diffusion through a cell membrane to see if you could apply it to a new situation. So, diffusion, we discovered in the lab, was the passive movement. Passive means no energy. It just happens of molecules from an area of higher to lower concentration. And that's the key thing. It always moves from high to low. So in the picture, in the center, you have the cell membrane, and it is semi-permeable. In the FET lab, we added protein channels for the molecules to go through. And that led to the misconception that things cannot pass through the cell membrane on their own, that they only pass through with a protein channel. But things can go through the cell membrane. So a number of you said the molecules can't pass through, so they will just bounce around on their own side. That's a misconception. So we are going to assume for this, the molecules can both pass through, both the circular molecules and the square molecules. So your goal is then to apply the definition of diffusion. Just draw one arrow from a circular molecule showing the direction that they will go. And then draw another arrow from a square molecule showing the direction it will move. And then explain. And in your explanation, look at the definition for diffusion for full points. And once again, that is in your OneNote notebook in the quiz section, and it is 4B. So that's how you can revise your grade if you didn't get full points, and if you haven't done it yet, there's how you can complete it. Then I want to go over the CER, or the scientific explanation from yesterday. You did a journey inside the leaf with Ed Puzzle. And I gave you key questions and little notes as you went through it to help you get prepared today. 
the key thing you needed to know yesterday is what is the job of a chloroplast. So if you don't know that, you need to stop right now and go look up that. What is the function of a chloroplast? Because you need to know that to be successful in yesterday's ed puzzle, and you need to, that to be successful on this major scientific explanation. So here I've helped and I've broken it down for you. The claim is you just say, what is the stimulus in the environment that led to the chloroplast response? And a sentence started with B, the stimulus in the environment was, name it, period, you're done, one sentence. Then evidence, so we didn't have data and actual numbers that you can write down in evidence, but you did make observations. And you played the video, and you can do it more than once, and watch how the chloroplasts move. What is making them move, okay? And then give in the evidence, what you're doing is giving a detailed description of the behavior of the chloroplast. And a possible sentence starter, the chloroplast responded to the stimulus by, and there you insert your description. And that should be one to two sentences. Then your reasoning is where the majority of your points come from. This is where you put it all together. So in your reasoning, we've been talking the key idea is homeostasis. And so you'll need to define what is homeostasis and, and explain how it is replied to this response. So a possible sentence starter for this is the reason for the chloroplast response is. I gave you a word bank in OneNote to help you. So please make sure you use those key terms. Use the sentence starters. And your reasoning should be two to three sentences. Now I've noticed on some writing samples that some students just go to the internet and copy things off and paste that. Whether it really addresses the question or not, um, that will receive a score of a zero until you write it using your own words and this format, please. So it is a major grade. Let's um, use the tools you're given to get the maximum points you can. And then the task today, we're continuing on with homeostasis. And you have, it is, first of all, you'll find it in OneNote, and it's in your skills building session, section. And you have a link to the cards, and the task cards look like this. They have a question or something to do, and then some kind of graphic. You also have your recording table. So, for example, number one, it says identify the term that describes the force within a plant cell that pushes the plasma membrane. Now, plasma membrane is another word for cell membrane against the cell wall. So you can see the vacuole, and that's what you, um, this large central vacuole tells you that this is a plant cell, because only plant cells need that big vacuole. And it holds water, and as it fills up, just like a water balloon, as it fills up, it presses against the side. And as it presses and expands, it pushes against the cell membrane that lines the cell wall. And that's what makes a plant, helps a plant stand up. That's why plants droop when you haven't watered them. And when this vacuole becomes depleted of water, the response to lack of water is to wilt and droop. So you learned about this in seventh grade. So that pressure from the vacuole filling with water and pushing against the sides is called turgor pressure. And so for number one, you would write turgor pressure. And then you would just continue working through the cards. And what I would suggest is get the ones you know right away, fill those in, and then go back and use your textbook or your notes in your OneNote notebook to help you fill in the rest. Hope this video helps and you have a great day.